Hi, good morning. Good morning from Kingston, Jamaica, where we're going to start off the workshop. Okay, so where's my, you know, I have a, my little um, intro card. We're in week, um, we're closing off the third week of the workshops. This week has been um, alone time. Let's see who, who turns up today. Um, I am very, I'm always looking forward to the surprise. Um, but I'm definitely going to be sharing um, clips onto um, my different sites this week, this weekend. So let's see who turns up next week. But today, we're going to be focusing on, we're in the, the Legends and Myths week. Yeah. So, hi. Welcome to the Personal Storytelling Workshop. I am Anika Russell, a visual artist based in Kingston, Jamaica. In this workshop, I use personal storytelling tool, a card deck to create opportunities for social engagement and self-inquiry in my art practice. The tool is a card deck inspired by the artwork of Luigi Savon, Philip Thomas, Mafalda Mondestine and also my own work. So today we're going to read a passage. Well, okay, so there's my phone. I better put that on vibrate while I am here. Okay, done. All right, so today um, we're going to read, actually not a passage, we're going to read a, a myth, a legend. And today we have it coming from um, in, an ancient legend. Uh, I've been taking them from all over the world. Um, the one we did on Monday was um, an Aboriginal creation story of the rainbow serpent. And so today we're gonna, it's a bit of a surprise, it's a um, pretty ancient myth. And then after that, we're going to use the cards to reflect on the story and come up with alternatives, comments, conclusions, etc. And just reflect through the story. Then if anyone is here, we'll open to the public. And if no one is here, uh, we will continue. We will maybe do a second um, reflection that's more general then after that we'll close the session it's only 40 minutes and if you are watching this on um, YouTube where the session sessions will be archived um, welcome and you'll be watching this way after the date today is um, July oh gosh I don't even know the date it's July, um, yesterday was July um, 5th, so today's July 6th, yeah, okay, there we go, almost half year already, 2022, all right, so let's move in to um, our story, we're using today uh, the Myths and Legends book by Miles Kelly, I think it's a UK based publisher really designed for kids um, yeah they're based in the UK in Essex apparently so today we're going to be um, looking at the the story is called Ra's secret name and it's an ancient Egyptian myth so I'm going to log in with um, my second phone, my second device, I should say.
Okay, so here we are. And I will just loosely um, follow along while I read as I handhold this, um, this phone here. Let me make sure you can hear me. Okay. Okay, so it's called Ra's Secret Name. Before time began, nothing exist existed except an endless dark ocean of chaos. Forming himself out of this nothing, the creator then made a world in the middle of the ocean. He lit the world with his own brilliance, the light of the sun, and then made other gods and goddesses to keep him company. Next came the humans to be his children. Every day, the creator sailed across the sky in a boat of blazing light, surveying the world. Each evening, his sun boat sank into the underworld, using his powers to protect himself from the clutches of the dead. He journeyed through their kingdom to fight the evils. Every morning, he sailed safely back up into the sky. Out of all the other gods and goddesses, Isis was the strongest, clever and cunning. She made it her business. To become the wisest of them all. So she made it her business to become the wisest of them all. Patiently, she traveled the world, discovering hidden properties of everything the creator had made. Eventually, she knew millions of spells and secrets, except for one. She did not know the secret name of the creator himself, the root to all his power. Isis was well aware that Ra would never give up his secret name unless he was forced. However, Isis also knew that nothing could harm Ra. His spirit of creation was far too strong for that. Isis thought long and hard. She realized that Ra could only be affected by something from his own body. But even if she could get hold of a strand of hair or a flake of his skin, how could she make a dangerous weapon? Biding her time, one day Isis saw her opportunity. Sometimes Ra would leave his sunboat in the heavens and descend down to earth on foot. On such a walk, Ra paused to talk to a group of gods. Suddenly Isis saw a drop of spittle fall from his mouth. As swift as the wind, she caught the spittle and whisked herself away. Hidden in her palace, Isis mixed the spittle of the mighty Ra with some earth-making clay. Muttering words of strong magic, she shaped the clay into the form of a snake. Then closing her eyes, Isis carefully spoke the secret word of creation. The great goddess stood back and watched. It was only a moment before bright colors wrapped themselves all around the clay creature from the tip of its nose to the point of its tail. With a wriggle, the snake reared its head and opened its eyes. Okay, snake incoming. Hissing and flickering its forked tongue. It was alive. Isis clapped her hands with delight, her eyes shining. Cautiously, cautiously, she picked up the creature and carried it to a spot on one of Ra's favorite walks. Staring deep into its eyes, she whispered its instructions then let it ripple away across the earth. As the snake found a shady hiding place and disappeared from view, Isis hurried away into the shadows. Mm. <laughs> that very day, Ra happened to stroll along that way, admiring the beauty of his creation. Suddenly, without warning, he received a terrible shock. He felt something he had never felt before, pain. 
Screaming in agony, he collapsed to the ground, clutching his foot. In his pain, he did not notice a strange snake slithering away from him, Isis's snake. Ra howled as burning poison began to spread through his flesh. Hearing the cries of the great creator, the other gods and goddesses came running to him in alarm. Something has hurt me. I didn't see it and I cannot guess what it might have been, for nothing I have made can hurt me. The creator gasped. Help me, Ra begged, growing pale and sweating. I fear that I am dying. Panicking, the gods and goddesses tried all the magic they knew, making every desperate effort they could think of to heal the creator. Nothing made any difference. Ra shook as the poison began to stiffen his muscles. Then Isis stepped forward. Great father, she said, her voice filled with fake concern. I think I know a spell that could save you, but it will only work if I use your secret name. Ra groaned, not only in pain but also in horror. He had no choice. Summoning all his remaining energy, he feebly beckoned Isis to bend down close to him. The goddess struggled to contain her excitement and put her ear to the creator's lips. I will tell you my secret name, Ra murmured his breathing becoming shallow, but only if you never reveal it to anyone. I promise, Ag agreed Isis eagerly. At last, Isis had the power she wanted. She healed Ra as the other gods and goddesses stood back in awe of her incredible magic. Fully restored, Ra rose through the heavens into his sunboat and light shone down on the world once more. Okay, so there is a um, creation story again for you today. Yeah, that one's dramatic. <laughs> Although the one um, on Monday was also dramatic with the bunyip and the rainbow serpent. So let's just look at Ra there with the snake. All right, so I, you know, I felt like I, when I was reading it, I wanted to find out why does she want to know the name that badly or why is she making a snake to bite him? So I'm just looking back. So he was very impressive. You know, he had created her and she was very clever. She did not know the secret name of the creator himself, the root to all his power. So in this one, a name is really important, okay? That was like, a name is powerful. Okay, that's, a, that's something to think about. All right. Um, wow. Okay. All right, so... I'm gonna grab um, my note paper and make some notes here. Okay, let's sharpen my pencil. think about that story I mean this one was um, what would you do if you were uh, and can you relate to Isis all right so let's start okay so we have that the name is powerful Hmm. 
the other thing I'm seeing is how you can create something and that create that thing that you create has an autonomy of its own like it has a life of its own so like you create children right and but you don't own those things you you kind of you have to acknowledge that they are their own entity and separate being with their own kind of story and everything because I think he, what he said is he Ra said that nothing he created could harm him so he kind of set up a world where he was never going to be in danger well, of course that is um, that is fair I guess you know who would do that right so let's say um creation being a creator creation and creating and I think it's like setting things free um, to yeah I'm gonna put that setting things free he didn't seem like he was an unjust um, creator you know, you have some crea creation stories where the creator sometimes is a little bit um, dict <laughs> dictatorial. So setting um, things free. So he was probably thinking about a peaceful life because he had created all these beings and things that were... Um, yeah, just things that he felt were important, um, but none of them could harm him. So he was always going to maintain um, the power. Okay, so let's let's say holding on to power, maybe. Okay, and then. Um, for her as well she for her as well hmm. I think there is a kind of um, wanting also to claim power And I also think there's something here about, <clears throat> sorry, let me grab water. Okay, <clears throat> I'm back. Let's help the voice um, <clears throat> co cooperate <laughs> today. Um, so holding on to power, claiming power, but there is something about trickery as well, like or deceit because she created a whole master plan in order to snatch um, power in some way right um, hmm. interesting so let's say um, trickery and deceit deception I'm gonna put deception Okay, that's a lot to go on. Okay, so let's um wait there's I feel like there's something else I'm missing. Like it needs one more thing. Cause this was a pretty complex um plan. Is it claiming power? Okay. And there's something here about um being clever, being smart as opposed to being wise. Because I feel like Ra was very wise, but um Isis was very clever. So let's see. Wisdom. Okay. 
So, we have a name is powerful, creation and creating. We have setting things free. We have holding on to power and we have claiming power. Trickery and deception. Wisdom versus cleverness. All right, so I'm going to put these here and then put this list up here. Grab my card deck. I feel like I struggle. I struggle with this card deck to open it every day. Um, thanks for staying around if you're watching this recording. Alright, so this, um, the tool has 12 question cards. I'm going to separate those as I have been doing. I think there's gonna be maybe later on maybe next month um, or later this month I will start using the question cards um, I'm gonna be inviting people to join um, so that there is um, an opportunity to work with the cards in a different way all right but let's let's focus here on the Ra's story so let's I want to look through this and think about any of the things that we just read um, there's power, there's creation, there's freedom, there's like trickery, and there's smarts. So I'm going to look through and see if any of these images feel like, none of them of course will kind of illustrate it clearly because they are more abstract in nature. So as to keep them open-ended. Um, okay, so I like this. This is like a creation story. To me, this is someone like creating something. Someone like rising up from some kind of, um, I don't know, sleep or an odd position, surely. This is a kind of being. So I like that one. All right, so let's see what else is here. Okay, let's put that aside. When I look at this one, it reminds me of like um, power. So maybe this one, and maybe also deception and trickery because you can't really see this person. You can't fully see. Um, this is a head with eyes. But you can't see everything about this person okay okay so there's definitely um setting things free okay here is setting things free for me i think this one is about like claiming power as well okay so i'll use this one for claiming power and um let's move on I think what I'm searching for is like wisdom and cleverness and then also the name being powerful. I think those are the themes that I'm trying to search for. I don't know why but I just like this one. I have no reason for it. I like how it feels in the story. I don't know why also but I like this one because it reminds me of um, the story with um, the snake being set being created and this also somehow remain reminds me of some kind of God that can that created everything all right I have a couple cards now a lot of cards let's um Let's see where that takes us. All right, so a name being powerful. I 
feel like a name is powerful because you can move from this state to this state where you are like sleeping and things are floating around like you're not really aware it's like the creation things are forming but when you're given a name it's like suddenly I'm a person I'm a being and that is like I can see everything I can have the power in my life and I can fly yeah so okay that's to me is the story of having a name Some of us, you know, like um, change our names. Some of us um, received names or histories based on different um, experiences. Some of us get married and take on a new name. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And um, as parents spend a lot of time crafting a name for their child. So yeah, name surely is powerful. All right, so I think this one is like setting things free. And then this is like, now you claim the power. What's this one? Yeah, so I feel this person had to fly before they got to that position. Um. I like this one um, okay so there's trickery and deception here but then we have um, this one which is more like creating things okay so I'm gonna put this there in top okay so this is what we have let me remove my um, paper Alright, so I'm going to um, switch the screen. Okay, so we can see that now, larger. Alright, so what I see is like something is being created or was created. There's the creative impulse here. And then suddenly like people are free names are given there's like someone who is feeling the creator feels larger than life and then there's a need for the create creations to be set free but also it's about maybe in, in creating the thing the creator also gets set free so there's a kind of mutually beneficial um agreement or situation there okay. and then um, at this point now we have people you know this figure here comes more into frame but there is some kind of trickery at f work so this figure the eyes are here again but they're more um, clouded there is some kind of other issue element in relation to this figure. There is maybe more motive and you can't see everything. So it's like the moment when things are created and we let it go or we set it out there in the world, you don't know what's going to happen again. And sometimes, okay, even the creations or you start to become unclear. Um, the things that you create could definitely um, be deceptive in nature based on maybe your sharp clear intentions for it and how it turns out um, we're looking right now at something that I created um, last year summer and I have no idea what I created um, but I just did I had the impulse to do it and 
it, when I named this deck, it did give it power in a way. Um, it gave me power as well, and then I had to set it in the world. People started to use it, and um, then you know, it's like I have to make. I couldn't see everything clearly about this. Like, where should I go? I've asked people, what should I do with this thing that I created? Um, <clears throat> I've gotten many responses, and it can kind of cloud your head. What do I do? What is the role of this thing? But then you have to set the creation free here at this point. And it's at that point that sometimes the creation becomes the more powerful thing. Because here is the person in the background here. This is maybe the creator. So there is a creator seeing, okay, the creator here is seeing things form, but has to set it free. So like our story, like I feel this is a snake set free. But also in that happening. So, okay, this is a little bit confusing now. So Ra created Isis and then Isis created the snake. And Isis used that snake to then challenge Ra's power. Isn't that interesting? Like you created something kind of like a parent and a child. You create a child and then the child makes something else or discovers or finds themselves in a way, finds their own power in a way that then challenges your power. I mean, it's a kind of archetypal struggle, I guess. Um, but it happens in all kinds of um, contexts. Okay, so I like that. I learned a lot from this story by thinking it through. Um, if you learned or you saw anything else in these cards that you want to point out, please do put it in the comments if you are watching the recording. Um, also, now we're going to move to... We have seven minutes left in the workshop. So... I'm going to move to just thinking about random, um, just pulling some random cards and then creating a story based on that. I also invite you to join that as well. Okay. All right. So we use the choose two to three cards that appeal to you. All right. Today we might do the arrangements. Let's do the arrangements. Let's try arrangements today all right so i'm just going to randomly pull um three cards So let's gather the rest of our cards up and put them aside. All right, so we have three cards here. Let's just put them in the order that I pull them. Okay, so here we have um, the three cards. It's a different, it's a very different viewpoint. We have um, we have someone that feels small, maybe is in their own world, and then we have someone that we have other people who are trying to get free from something even as there's a, a larger power that persists behind and then we have um just like an unknown void it's all it's like a sun to me it looks like the sun so maybe there's a warmth okay we've gotten our notice <laughs> our usual part of our um sessions right okay um on my time we have four minutes left but let's see how far we get so it's about feeling maybe in your own world 
but while you're in your own world you're trying to struggle through a lot of issues maybe you're not aware that someone else is like people are seeing that or maybe you're the person that's seeing these struggles okay suppose this is the person that's watching okay yeah okay i think i've i've, I've found something that's interesting this, there's like these leaves floating around this person this person has leaves floating in front of them as well you can see like the head here in um front view and so this could be the same person this is a small version so like a zoomed out version and this is like close up so what this person is observing in this um mass of things is like little elements that they maybe microscopic things that they didn't see before and what does that create it creates i don't know it creates a kind of i don't know something growing it creates a sense of this is the same shade maybe it creates a sense of um less definition less knowing or maybe reforming it's like this these leaves have been incorporated into this mass so it's like you observe something you are okay i'm seeing a story here you're already surrounded by things like this is just where you are right that's just the nature of where you are in this in your environment you're surrounded by things or you might be surrounded by things and you're not really sure how or why um, they're just always there right it's just a part of your being then you decide at some point to look closer and you discover all these this world of things in this small in this ecosystem you're able to see many things and that creates a kind of maybe change or awareness or a need to do something and then you be you start to absorb that information and you change as a as a um, result of that you are becoming different as well and that means you start to grow you start to change form okay so that's interesting to me that someone could look at their environment and then absorb things from it and then make the necessary changes needed yeah so if this if you saw um if you saw this recording what do you see in these images what do you feel is here and how is that story that we just talked about relevant to you in your life? Um, are there things in your environment that you maybe have never noticed? Are there things that um, you can incorporate? And what changes also are you undergoing um, as a result of that environment? Yeah. Okay. So this is our story and I we'll leave you here with the workshop do join again on monday and wednesdays at 10 a.m to 10 40 a.m eastern standard time up until um, september 25th um, this workshop is run as a part of the alice yard presentation in documental okay so all the best take care